Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles or your tablet or whatever you use to look at the Word of God, <laughs> if you'll get it out this morning. We are so thankful. I want to be sure to say as well how much we appreciate how you have supported us through the years um, and just allowed us to go and do what God has called us to do. We're so thankful and so thankful to be living there in the country of Rwanda. It's amazing to see the growth and all that God is doing. If you have your Bibles with you, we are going to start by looking in Psalm, Psalm chapter 27. And keep your Bibles with you because we're going to be reading a lot of scripture today, which is good. That's the best source. Amen? It's not you know, news or us or a best friend, but a lot of times the Word of God is where we need to go and to the Lord. We're going to be reading the whole chapter of Psalm 27 this morning. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, this that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock and now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle I will sing yes I will sing praises to the Lord hear O Lord when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. Series, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14 Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. I could almost just sit right down because there's so much goodness in there. But what is so amazing about God's word is there's so much that he wants to tell us if we would just take the time to listen. We live in a world where there's a lot going on. Everybody's busy. Everybody's tired. There's a lot of frustration. There's noise all around us. But today, for the next few minutes, and I promise I won't take two hours, but for the next few minutes, I would ask you to open up your heart and open up your ears and hear the voice of truth because he's speaking today and he wants to be the loudest voice. Amen. And I mentioned earlier before I, I was singing that no matter our circumstance, whatever it may be, if we are believers, he's not going to leave us or forsake us. But sometimes we're in the midst of a circumstance that's a struggle and we want to give up and we don't know where our help is going to come from. And it seems like we don't know where to turn next. And so today, if that's you, then the Lord wanted me to come here today and say, wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Be of good courage. Amen. He told us in his word that you will have trouble, but he's already overcome. So we are overcomers. But today, and this isn't necessarily an exciting word because we like to hear, you know, blessing and, and go forth. But sometimes he is whispering to us, wait on the Lord. Don't go do it yourself. Don't make the decision in your humanity, but wait, I say, on the Lord. 
If I'm to be honest with you today, I'm not a patient person. Michael can tell you that it's something that God is continually having to help me with and, and help me grow in. And so that might be your experience as well. You might have, have trouble being patient. I really like to get things done. I'm a go-getter. I know the plan and I know the way that I want to do it. But what I often find with the Lord is that his plan and his way is higher than mine. And he's just waiting for me to hush and get out of the way or stop and get out of the way and let him come do what it is that he wants to do. But so many times in our impatience, and sometimes because we feel like we can't see quite what he's trying to work out, we'll step out and do something that we were never meant to do. And we can delay the goodness, or we can completely miss out on what it is that God is wanting to do in our life because we couldn't just wait on the Lord. Just be of good courage and believe, have faith. Now, if I'm not the only one here today that struggles with that, if you have had that struggle in your life as well, you're not the only one. Even in the Word of God, you find it. And today what I want to do, letting that statement ring in your ears, wait on the Lord, what I want to do is I want to go back to Exodus. Because in Exodus... There is a situation that happened with the Israelites and Moses. While Moses was up on the mountaintop communing with the Lord, they were down in the valley unsure of what to do. So turn to Exodus, and we are going to go to chapter 24, and we're going to be reading verse 12 through 18. Exodus chapter 24, beginning in verse 3. So Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said we will do. Go down to verse 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone and the law and commandments which I have written that you may teach them. So Moses arose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God, and he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and her are with you. If any man has difficulty, let him go to them. Then Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he said to Moses, out of the midst of the cloud, the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. So Moses went to the people. This is after God has delivered them out of Egypt. They've seen the parting of the Red Sea. They've seen God deliver them in a mighty, unexpected, amazing way. And now it comes to a time where Moses says, this is what the Lord says. Are you going to follow it? And they say, yes. They answered with one voice, all the words which the Lord has said we will do. So he goes up to the mountain, and the Israelites can see the glory of God. They can see the glory of God. And all they have to do is wait. That's it. That's the only instruction that they were given. Wait for me. That's all. But they didn't do that. Because like us, they started to let their circumstance get bigger than their faith in the God that delivered them and took them through the Red Sea. Do we ever do that? Let's just be real today. Do we ever do that as children of God? Have those moments where we start to become a little bit unsure. All they had to do was wait, and they could even see his glory. They could see the fire on the mountain. We have seen his goodness in our lives. We have seen him deliver us time and time again. We can tell stories of revival and miracles and great things and deliverances, but sometimes we get into these moments in our life where we're down in a valley, and we feel like the top of that mountain is so far away, and we're never going to get up there, 
and we're not going to get to that victory that we need. And even though we can remember and see his goodness of days past, we still begin to doubt. We begin to struggle. And we sometimes step out and do things that delay us from the goodness. If you turn just a couple of chapters over to chapter 32 in Exodus, we're going to see exactly what the Israelites were doing. They've been told to wait. They've been given someone to help them while they wait. And that was the end of the instruction. But if you go to chapter 32, beginning in verse 1, it says, Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together, and Aaron said to him, Make us gods that shall go before us. For this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Let me pause right there. That's their first mistake. They say, this man who brought us out of the land of Egypt. Moses didn't do it. God did it. He used Moses to lead them, but God was the one who did it. Let's keep reading. We do not know what has become of him. That's the second mistake. You don't need to worry what's become of the person to the left or to the right because God's got it and he sits on the throne. Amen. And Aaron said to them, break off the golden earrings which are in your ears, your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron and he received the gold from their hand and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Now, when I read that, I just think, what is wrong with these people? What in the world are they thinking? All they've been told is to wait. But if I'm honest, we have those moments. If we let our circumstance get too big, if we look to man first to be our help, instead of waiting and looking to God. What's, what's interesting, even as you read this scripture, is not only were they not having faith and just waiting on the Lord, but when they went to Aaron to get help, he had to fashion a tool to make this idol that they wanted to make. He didn't have the tools. How many times do we look to something else someone else, some other thing that is not even equipped to give us what we need. When our Heavenly Father has said, wait, be of good courage and wait. So it's interesting also to me when I read this that they took their earrings. Now, ladies, y'all can understand this. Sometimes we have fancy earrings that were brought with a price and we keep them away for a special time. Most of the time, we have very inexpensive earrings <laughs> that weren't, you know, didn't really cost that much, aren't really valued that much, but people don't know it because they're shiny and they look good from a distance. So when I think about these earrings <laughs> that they had in their ear, I think about they are probably kind of old, probably a little busted. They've been through the, the wilderness. So this is not like a pristine metal, an amazing thing. So they are taking just whatever they've got because they've given up on waiting on when Moses is going to come down the mountain and their circumstances are too big and they give it to Aaron and they have the audacity to take this mess mold it together and say, that's the God that delivered us. But what they don't understand is literally the rest of the story from chapter 25 to chapter 21. Moses is on the mountain and he is communing with the God of creation. And our Heavenly Father is literally saying to Moses, this is how you will build the tabernacle. This is the priest. This is what the priests are going to wear. They are going to be wearing clothes that are made of the finest linen, the purest thread, beautiful, beautiful colors. I want you to get not the one that's not equipped, but he even says the most skillful 
artisans. He is literally describing to Moses, Moses, this is the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. And here in this place, I will come and I will speak to my people. Let's read that because he says it even better than I can articulate that. He says in Exodus, he says, you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length and cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherubims of gold of hammered work. You shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. And down in verse 22, and there I will meet with you. I will speak with you from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubims, which are on the ark of the testimony about everything, which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel, the very mercy seat where he will meet with us, but they can't see it because they're not there. They can see the fire. They can see his glory, but they're not there. They're down in a valley and they're getting distressed and they're getting discouraged and they're getting worried and they don't know what to do. They are taking something that was never meant for them. Not the best, not the most skillful, beautifully crafted thing, not creating a place where the God of all creation will commune with, with them, but a golden calf because they're in the valley and they don't know what to do. Don't miss what our Heavenly Father is working and crafting and doing on your behalf because you don't quite know what's going to happen next. Don't let the voices of this world that say, well, it was good once upon a time, but I don't know what we're going to do now. I've been through so much, I can't do it one more time. He will take you through the fire again, and he will take you through in a victorious way and craft and fashion for you something so beautiful so that you can come closer to him, closer to who he is, and he will give you the best and the greatest because that's how he loves us. But he didn't promise we wouldn't have trouble. He said we would, but he said, take heart because I've already overcome. He has already overcome, understandably so, as all this is going on and the Lord is giving all of these wonderful insights to Moses, giving him all of this instruction. He knows what's also going down in the valley. So after they've had this time where they've explained and then he's given the Ten Commandments, he stops and he says to Moses, Moses, go get down. He tells him that he's got to leave down off of the mountain. For your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. I do not want to be that description. Because time and time again, he is waiting for us to get our hands off of it, to stop being anxious, to stop being worried, to stop wringing our hands and going to this one and going to that one and looking for this answer. He just needs us to be still and know that he is God and listen for his voice and wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, because he already has it. Now, as these verses continue in chapter 32, the Lord gets angry with the Israelites. And he says to Moses, he says, my anger has burned hot against them. And, and he's basically saying, forget it. We're going to start another nation. But Moses advocates for his people. He says, he, it literally uses the word plead. He pleads with the Lord, Lord, please don't take your hand away. Don't let the Egyptians be able to say he brought them out of the land of Egypt just to let them die in the wilderness. He reminded him of his promises over those people. And what's amazing for us today 
we have an advocate that is greater than Moses. Not only did God so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Not only did he give us Jesus to redeem us and to save us and to make a way, but he also left the Holy Spirit as our comforter. And in Romans 8, it tells us that the Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf even when we do not know what to pray. So I don't know what you are facing today, but I do know that if you are a believer, you are a child of the Most High King. And he says to you, this is not too big. This is not too great. I have good plans for you. And if you will just wait patiently on me, I will give you something greater than your circumstance. I will use this as a testimony to my glory because if we ever lived in a time and a place that needs to know about his goodness, you're living in it. If you're breathing, let's check really quick. Can you breathe in and out? Everybody's breathing. Good, because we don't need to call 911 right now. <laughs> but everybody is breathing. That means that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I don't care what anybody else is telling you today. I don't care what anybody else has to say. This word says that you are a child of the Most High King, and God has ordained you, and he's using you in a mighty way. Let him use you. Let him use your circumstance, because I'm going to tell you that valley that is so hard in the valley is where things grow. Amen? And he is going to grow you so he can use you and take you to a different position, to a different place and give you the ability to speak into someone's life that you couldn't speak before. Give you the ability to say, I have seen the goodness of the Lord. I have seen the valley of the shadow of death, but I will fear no evil because his rod and his staff, they comfort me. So I'm saying today, he is saying today, wait, I say on the Lord, help will come from him. He will speak over your life if you will just be still and listen to the voice of truth. Amen. In closing, I just want to read. This is a poem that I found talking about the valley. It says, sometimes life seems hard to bear, full of sorrow, trouble, and woe. It's then that I remember that it's in the valley I grow. If I always stayed on the mountaintop and never experienced some pain, I would never appreciate God's love, and I would be living in vain. I do not always understand why things happen as they do, but but I am very sure of one thing. My Lord will see me through. My little valleys are nothing when I picture Christ on the cross. He went through the valley of death. His victory was Satan's loss. Thank you, Lord, for the valleys. For this one thing I know, the mountaintops are glorious, but it's in the valley I grow. Do not underestimate what God is growing in you right now. Do not underestimate what he's doing on your behalf, whether you see it with your eyes or not. And if you've seen his goodness before, don't forget. Hold tighter to that than you ever have before. He has a plan and a purpose for you. Amen. Hallelujah, Pastor. Hallelujah. I tell you, her daddy can preach, but she got to preach too. Amen. God is a generational God, and that just shows us how great God is. Uh, some of our ushers here, you have some cards to hand out. I want you to walk among the audience, and I want you to hand those out. Uh, this church supports uh, the Tignors. I personally support them. They're on my hit list. Amen. <laughs> And uh, I know her dad real well. We're prayer partners, and we work together. And when I found out that they were going to the mission field years ago, I wanted to invest in their ministry. And uh, you know when the Holy Ghost speaks to you to do something like that, it, I tell people this. I say, God is setting you up for blessing. And uh, so many times we, we miss that. But uh, I want you to take these cards, and if you are led of the Holy Spirit to support this team with finances, wonderful. 
if you're led of the Holy Spirit to support them with your prayers. Wonderful. But take the card. If you've got one of those magnets that goes on the side of your refrigerator, you can look at them. And as you go by, the Lord will remind you, pray for the Tignors. They're on a foreign field. They're in an area where there is turmoil. They're in an area where there is danger. Of course, there's danger everywhere, and that's why we need God in our lives. But uh, there's a lot of unrest in the nations of Africa and uh, a lot of things going on that uh, we have terrible tragedies right here in America, and we all need the Lord. And I want you to take the card and uh, pray over it, fill it out. If you decide to support them, please return the card to me or to one of the ushers here or someone that it makes its way back to me. Because what we like to do is run everything through the church here. And that way they know that they get their money on a timely basis. We, we give heavily into missions. And everything you see in this place, plus the other campus, is all paid for. Everything is debt free. That fort we're building out there is being built debt free. God has been so good to us simply because we support missions and we sow into the kingdom. I'm going to ask Sister Leslie to come back. I want you to sing that song one more time. Amen. If you'll get that CD ready for her. That was such a, a beautiful song because some of you came here today, excuse me, going through places and hard places, and I could hear the Lord speak. A lot of people in here that you have questions about what you're going through. And I want you to go out on Facebook Live, or you can go to our live stream, or you can go to um, YouTube later. We'll have this whole service out there. I want you to hear what the Lord has said to you today because she was addressing issues through the power of the Holy Ghost that are going on in people's lives. People that have questions. People that wonder, how am I going to make it through this? Listen to the song and listen to the sermon again. Meditate on it and the Lord will tell you how. Sister Leslie. Times I've questioned certain circumstances, things I could not understand. Many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision, and my frustration gets so out of hand. But it's then that I'm reminded. I've never been forsaken. I've never had to stand one test alone. And as I look at all the victories, His Spirit rises up in me. And it's through the fire my weakness is made strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand and worship with me. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb he never offered our victories without fighting but he said that would always come in time so remember when you're standing Look at him. in the valley the of decision and the adversary says give in, just hold on. Our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again. I know within myself that I would surely perish but if I trust the hand of God he'll shield the flame again again he never promised 
that your cross would not get heavy and your heel would not be hard to climb and he never offers our victories without fighting but he says help will always come in time so remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the Take you through the fire. 